You're right. I think we all know each other now. I'm Jennifer and I am the general manager here at Trophy Club Municipal Utility District. And today I just want to kind of go over the district, let you know a little bit about us, what we do and why we do it. And then possibly some ways you can help us. Um, kind of tell you a little bit about who we are. We are a governmental entity. We were created in 1975 by the Texas legislature. We were formed under Chapter 54 of the Texas Water Code. And we are governed by a five-member board of directors, managed and operated by a staff of 19 currently. Actually, currently we're 18, but we're, we're looking to fill that 19th position. So. Um, we oversee the fire department and the water and the wastewater services here in Trophy Club. Um, water and wastewater, we have three separate departments, the office and finance, water and distribution, and the wastewater and collections department. Um, water, uh, the, the distribution system is the, the pipelines that take the water out of our water plant out and distributes it out into the system. Then the collection system is the system that brings it all back to the wastewater plant after it's used. Um, a little bit about our fire services. We have a professional fire department and all of our fire uh, personnel are dual certified. So they service both fire and EMS. Um, they are all certified paramedics and so they have um, a bigger job than, than in some of the larger cities where they have two separate departments. Our fire station that we're in today, this beautiful building was completed in 2011. Some of the equipment that we have includes a quint, our fire engine and a breast truck. And we have ordered right now a new ladder truck that will replace the current quint that's about 20 years old and that is a picture of what the new fire ladder truck will look like and it's supposed to be delivered it originally was the end of the year but they were able to get it into the to the construction a little bit sooner so we're kind of keeping our fingers crossed that it could actually be this summer Ooh. yes so we're excited about that someone that was going to order a truck dropped out and they were able to slide us into their spot so kind of cut a little bit. Um, our water and wastewater services, we provide drinking water and wastewater disposal and treatment to over 3,000 or 3,100 retail connections and we provide wholesale service to the town of Trophy Club for another uh, little over 1,200 connections. We get our drinking water from four wells, about 30 percent of our water comes from the wells and about 60%, I'm sorry, 70%, even though I have 60% on there, and again, it was late last night, I apologize. About 70% of the water comes from Fort Worth. Uh, our wastewater treatment plant is located in the northwest corner of, or I'm sorry, the northeast corner of the district. Well, it's on the northwest corner of Indian Drive in the northeast corner of the town. How's that? It's up there. It's up there in that far corner. Uh, this is a map of the district and the PID, or the, I'm sorry, the town. The green area represents the PID and the blue area represents the, the area that the district covers. Um, we have recently annexed a, a little bit more those two white spots that you see the, f the little area up there that's kind of a triangle shape we've recently annexed that's the LDS church and a uh, Montessori school that's next to it so our the map that you're seeing here is the start of a, of a GPS mapping system and it's just kind of when I could scrape a little money together from leftover things, we're putting it into this project. But the, the map that you see is just one layer turned on. And you probably recognize that there's a lot of neighborhoods that are not on there because the, the map that we were able to obtain from Tignog and Perkins at the time, the, their GPS map, was, was an older map. 
the Wallace Group has already been adding a lot of uh, the subdivisions that have been built over time to this map. And um, I want to point out that um, this only shows the layer of the, the boundaries. But we can go into this map and you can turn different layers on. All of the water and wastewater lines are, are on there. You can turn it on where you can just see the sewer lines, just see the water lines. The water lines are pretty much complete in our GPS system, pretty much up to date and complete. When we get a little more money scraped up, I'm gonna get the, the sewer lines a little more on there. But eventually this is gonna be a really nice map. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna be able to provide it to the town. They can put their every little stop sign so that if they just wanna see where every sign is, they can turn that layer on. So this is kind of just the beginning of a, of a long project, but I'm really excited about it, that at least we have our water lines. So if you were to look at this map and you turn the water lines on, it kind of makes me laugh because it looks like there's just these water lines out in the middle of nowhere because the subdivision isn't put on there yet. So we're gonna get that all caught up, but um, it's, it's really kind of exciting that, that that in itself is a project that's kind of ongoing and, and I, you know, hope in the next couple of years at least we'll have a really good GPS map. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, down below 114 there in the lower right, uh -huh. is, uh, I guess that's Solana? That's the Solana area, uh, yes. There's going to be a new development. Is that going to fall into your service area? They are in our service area. Okay. The, the Entrada, there's yeah. two. One is in this area and that is uh, Granada and that's a residential area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting because it's parked. The, the white area is not in the district. The blue area is in the district. Okay. But they have chosen to get their water and wastewater service from the city of, of Westlake or the town of Westlake. Mm -hmm. Up here in this area is the Entrada. That's the new uh, commercial yeah. or uh, mixed use Right. And they too will be getting their water and wastewater service from Westlake. But oh, both of those areas, they, the, with the exception of this Y area, they still, main, they still remain in the district, so they will be paying taxes in the district. They do pay for the, the taxes for fire and for our operations and maintenance tax for oh, water and sewer. Right, right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. On the Granada one, is 86 homes being built and roughly 43 are in our district and they're forecasting the minimum price or the average price, I should say, per home is a million and a quarter. So that adds to our tax base. And again, Entrada is a $500 million project. Mm -hmm. so well, I was just curious as to whether you were there or not there. <laughs> yes. And the, those areas, we do not have what they call a CCN, a Certificate of Convenience and Necessity. So they have a choice that they can get water from the district or they can get water and sewer from Westlake. But they can't de-annex out of the district. So they will st remain in the district and they will pay taxes, except for that white area. That's not in the district, unless they chose to be annexed in. That's where those other, of the 48, of the 84 homes, that's where right, the Right, right. Not, not entirely, but a good yeah. portion of that one. You know, and it's it's kind of similar, like up in the PID, there's an area, and Neil probably can explain that better than me, but there's a subdivision that is my understanding if you live on one side of the street, you're in the PID, and if you're on the other side of the street, you're in the district. So it's one subdivision, and I guess, is it right there, Neil, where that, Oh, blue, yeah. oh, I see the blue and the yeah. green area. Yeah. yeah. So that particular street right here, yeah. one side of the street is in the PID, and the other side of the street is in the mud. Yeah. And also there's another project being built across from the, club, uh, the golf course clubhouse down in this area right now. They have a bridge going over the creek and all these new homes, and it's only like 17 or 18, but they're all million dollar homes. They're inside our area, but it's actually, I think some type of the PIDs actually pay for the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But that's another, another thing. But uh, we're, we're getting pretty close to the 1,400 plus homes in the PID uh, and non-PID, I guess you could say that, are, are almost built out. 
So that's uh, where uh, the Walls Group was talking about the 200. Right. I mean, it, it went faster than expected because there's only about 130 permits that haven't been issued yet out of the 1,400. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, the background skyline, Eagles Ridge, back up there. Kind of, I don't know how many of them back up there. That's supposedly like two, 200. 200 up there? That's about it. Right, over in the, the, the district area. Yeah, yeah, Eagles Ridge too. Uh, All right, um, so a little bit about us. Um, the, the water and wastewater system is run by a group of professional operators. Um, TCEQ is our regulatory agency. That's the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And they set requirements based on what your system is as to what type of operator you are required by law to have. For our water system, the, the, our, our operators were required to have at least one sea level operator. For our wastewater system, we are required to have one B level operator. Um, as you can see in our water and distribution system, we have three operators that are up to the level B. A is the highest and then it goes down to D. D is what we call an operator trainee. They are not authorized to actually work on their own. They, are, they can work as long as they're with another operator. Um, and each of these levels, you have to have a certain amount of years of experience before you can go to that next level. It requires so many hours of classroom training as well as testing through the TCQ. So we have a very qualified staff. We have uh, 3B operators, 8C operators in the water and distribution. In the wastewater and collections, we have one operator that is an A level, uh, three that are at B level, and three that are at C level. Most all of our operators are dual certified in both water and wastewater, like our firefighters in EMS, our water guys can also work as wastewater guys. Or girls, we right now don't have any girls, but we could. Um, we have, if you combine the uh, years of service of our operators, we have a total of more than 150 years of combined water and wastewater service with amongst our operators. Very proud of that. A little bit about our water system. Um, right now our system capacity to bring in water from Fort Worth is right at 7 MGD, million gallons per day. And we can produce almost a million gallons per day of groundwater. Right now our average daily production over the year is about two and two and a half million gallons per day. And our uh, average day production for August of 2014 jumped to 5.2 million gallons per day. Um, since I've worked here at the district in the last three years, I believe that in the summer of 2012, in it was, I want to say September 11th, we hit 7.2 million gallons. So that was the, the highest usage since I've worked here. But after that, our peak has been around five and a half to, to six million gallons. When you say, when you say, when we talk, you're talking, basically outflow. When you talk about production, you're talking outflow of water into the system. That's right, production. leaving our water plant, what we actually pump out of the plant on a yeah. daily basis, that's so right. Very high number, what, what caused that? Watering lawns? Watering lawns, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that's right. I know. Out of curiosity, Can what, come in what's your production on a Monday when there's no water, which, which you have a, Kind of feeling for what the money runs? Um, no, you know, I did look at that. Um, I, it's been a year before last that I looked at that, and I have it because I was curious. That was the first year that we started the no watering on Mondays. Yeah. So at the end of the year, it wasn't that great compared to the rest of the week, but I at, at the, in the beginning. And then you can see where people really caught on to it towards the end of the summer. And Bill, I don't remember what it was, but I'll look and I'll let you know that. Because we did look at that one time. It's really a good thing. I'm, I'm a much a, a very much a proponent of that because you won't believe how 
much good it does for your pumping system. It's kind of like what I say me, you know, on um, Friday night, I'm ready to just collapse. Well, by Monday morning, our pumps need to just cool down and rest for a day. So it really, really helps the system as a whole to give that one day of not watering. And I'll kind of skip into this a little later, but when Fort Worth is, um, they, they're kind of backing out down now because the lake levels are up to, to about 74%. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they were looking at one point right before Christmas of impending stage two was coming. And um, so we started working on a watering schedule. And everybody was kind of on board with them until they decided to break it up with a Monday. Include Monday watering. So it would be a certain group on Monday. And I think most of us felt like, you know, we've worked for three years to get people used to never on a Monday. We didn't want to change that. So we had decided, the district, to go our separate ways. And a lot of other districts and, and cities and towns did too because it's just really a good thing and just keep that frame of mind. Where I live, it, we aren't allowed to water on a Monday. So just that I always know you can't water on a Monday. That makes it really easy for people. So yeah. um, in 2014, we had a total of um, 91,478,000 gallons of water produced. That was for the year. Um, our ground storage tanks, we have two that hold three MGD and approximately 75 miles of water line in the district. This shows our water pumped in millions and this is a chart that we provide with our uh, board packet every month so if you want to kind of keep up with where we are in water usage you're welcome to, to pull up the board packet and in the uh, general managers report on the water operations this is a chart that's there we try to track it um, what the water usage looks like and of course you can see where July and August get around and it gets really hot and you see that that usage go up but overall Kind of all looks the same. Maybe the the difference is a, is uh, the the growth is going to push us up a little bit, but the pattern you see is the same, and and that's a really good thing as a as a manager. You want to see that it kind of looks the same over time. When you start seeing these really weird way out there, as you start worrying there might be a leak somewhere out there in the system. So so we look very good here. Um, our ground storage tanks. We have two. Uh, they, that's for three million gallons each, so a total of six million gallons of water storage. Elevated storage, we have 400,000 gallon, this tank that you see here out on 114, that's the 400,000. And then the tank that's over by the high school, that is a 500,000 gallon. And approximately 75 miles of water line in the district. Are those usually full all the time? Are they half full, three quarter full? The water lines? The, no, the tanks. Uh, the tanks? That depends on the time of year. We, we, we set our alarms differently. The elevated, I will say, they pretty much stay full year round. Although, um, you know, there are times where we, when the usage gets really low, we'll drop them down, but that's, that's something that we kind of monitor and look at. The, the ground storage tanks out here, in the winter time, we drop those pretty significantly down. You don't want the water to sit in there and get stale too long, so. Um, the elevated storage tanks, as a matter of fact, we just finished a project. We did this, what, through the, through the winter time when the usage is low, and our customers didn't even know this was happening, but back before Christmas, um, in like the November, or late November, early December time, we were running the entire area off just the tank over by the school because we had the other elevated tank shut down while we installed what they call a PAX mixer. And it keeps the water fresh and turned in there. It's just like a, a big old hand mixer is what it looks like. And it keeps the water going, you know, from, from sitting and settling in there. Then at the first of the year, after the first of the year, we did, we were, the entire area was running off just the tank off 114 and we had the other tank taken offline. And each of those was for about three day period. 
that we had them down, but we can float the whole system off one tank or the other. That allows for redundancy. Um, we're, we're looking at some water system upgrades right now. Right now we're working with uh, the, the, the end goal that we've been trying to get to, we've been working with Fort Worth, is to install a larger production meter out here at the water plant that allows us to take more water into the system. And um, in order to get to that end goal, there were some off-site projects that were required that we, we do with them. The first is a regional water line, a 48-inch line, that comes from what is known as their Kaler tank and brings water over to this region. And we are participating in that. The latest and greatest estimate is our, our share is going to be about $683,000 for that project. They're, it's underway right now. Um, they've bid all this, there was two phases to it, they've bid it out. The only thing that's still not known is they could run into an area where we may have to purchase some easements. So right now, it looks like our, our portion will be uh, 683000 Then there's a second phase to that, or a, what, the second phase to the regional, which will be just the district and Westlake working together to bring water from where that project ends over to 377, where, I'm sorry, over off of 170, where Westlake takes, has their intake. Then the final or third phase will be from that, from their intake point over to our intake point. And that will be only Trophy Club Municipal Utility District that will fund that. Although there is some interest that we're, we're going to work on, these are just in planning stages, to possibly get some emergency interconnects. Right now, Trophy Club and Westlake, we do have an emergency interconnect with them. And that allows, if something horrible happens, someone comes and rips our line out off 114, we could hook into it and bring water in from a different direction. So we're, we're on down on the next part where we've um, engaged in, or we're about to engage an engineering firm to create kind of what I call a master water plan to prioritize the infrastructure capital improvements that we need to be looking out over the next 10, 15, 20 years working on and also help us maybe identify the best location for an emergency interconnect. There's the possibility of over with South Lake. There's a possibility over on the other side of town by the elevated with Roanoke. So we're kind of looking at all those and that's something we'll want to see what is most cost effective. But having an emergency interconnect would be a really good thing for Trophy Club. Um, our wastewater system, average daily flow right now is about 950,000 gallons per day. Our peak day flow has been one and a half million gallons per day. Our wastewater treatment plant design capacity is 1.7 MGD, 1.75, that is flow capacity. And for those of you that sat through the last talk, I'm not going to go a lot into the wastewater treatment plant, I'm just kind of getting over the, the top of it, but we do have 10 lift stations. We have two inverted siphons. One is in the pit area, one is over at Marshall Creek, and that is, um, at one time when I first came here, actually let me tell you about my first day of work here. When I came to Trophy Club, it was raining very hard that day. And prior to coming, the board members had told me about a project that they wanted me to look at, um, that there was, a, a water line cross, I mean, I'm sorry, a sewer line crossing of Marshall Creek, and it was an aerial crossing. And they wanted to see if that might be something a developer was the, of the commons was going to be working, is that would that be a time, he, he needed to connect in to that uh, aerial crossing, and he wanted to, they wanted to know if that's the best way, what he was, what he was looking at or proposing doing, and so I came in and had my first day at work and, and the water superintendent took me over there about 3.30 or 4 o'clock to see it and it was flooding. It was just the worst rain you've ever seen in Trophy Club that first day. And we get over there and the water is like almost to that bridge and I asked him, I said, well why do y'all call this an aerial crossing? 
And he was like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, all the aerial crossings that I've ever seen are in the air, you know? And he just thought that was the funniest thing because it was that it was flooding that day and the water was actually up over this aerial crossing. And I can tell you that I've never seen the water that, that it's all would have been always been an aerial crossing ever since and, and after. But it was scary. It, that aerial crossing was put in many, many years ago, at least 30, 35 years ago. So we decided to, to work with the, the developer and he funded the majority of the cost to instead make that an inverted siphon under the creek. Because the last thing you want to do is have a sewer line float away in a flood because then you got a real problem. So we do have two inverted siphons. We have approximately 60 miles of sewer line in the district. Or, excuse, excuse me. Mm -hmm. If you've got, you, you got twice as much water line? 75. No, about oh, 75, oh, 75 miles of water okay. line excuse and about okay. 60 miles of sewer. I'm sorry, I was thinking of a different number. I'm sorry. I'm good. <laughs> and part of the reason that we have more water line, and that's an interesting question. People have asked me that before. Remember, our water lines go outside of here and carry all water from the Fort Worth line in. So that's, that's some more miles to add on. Plus, let me say this. I had one employee calculate the water lines and the other employee calculate the sewer lines. Then we had to sit down together because they were really far apart, you know. And I said, one of y'all is measuring the little inches on the map better than the other one. So those are only approximations. We, uh, I'm kind of surprised about the peak day and flow and stuff because of the CBOD, mm -hmm. the BOD, and the capacity on that. I had better like eight, eight or nine in my mind on that as a capacity limit, that limit. We doing okay? At the 950? Yeah. Oh, it's a day to day. It's a day to day. It's yeah. a day to day. Not the 18, I mean, the 18 months construction. This is going yes. through, that's another winter cycle. Yes. And that's, you know, that was the disappointing part of the long road that it took to, for us to get to the point where we could issue the bonds. I had hoped that if, if things had gone like, you know, as you wish, we'd be well under construction and getting to the end of it right now. When, when we, in this phase, I know this is not exactly where your presentation's at, in this phase development at the Wastewater Creek plant, mm -hmm. As they phase through, we're not going to see a reduction in that capacity, are we? No. Okay, because I'm looking at it saying if it, there's a possibility that it is an enhancer as soon as the first stream or the first two streams come on, come on board. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right, uh, this next slide is just kind of shows what our wastewater operations look like on a monthly basis. And this is from February. Again, this is a chart that you can find in the board packet every month if you're interested and kind of follow this. Um, you can see that we've really did, we really did very well in, in February in that overall we were having a percent removal of somewhere between 96 and 98% depending on what, what parameter it is we are removing. But I will tell you that that gets um, scarier and scarier each, each month. So we're almost to a good point of, of getting past this. Um, quickly, the, the wastewater treatment plant upgrade that we're looking at um, is a membrane bioreactor system, MBR. Um, our bids are to be received on March the 26th. The estimated cost of the, the construction of the, the upgrade 11 million and the wastewater treatment plant will be able to consistently meet our current and future discharge limits. We are looking at not just the parameters that are in our permit right now, but we know that at our next renewal, which comes next fiscal year, we're going to have some a couple of additional parameters put in there. So this type of treatment will, will help with that. For those of you that were here in Kevin's presentation, you may have seen these pictures, but for you that were not, that is a, a, a membrane. It's just a, a plastic sheet. Mm -hmm. And that is what the trains look like when they're down into the system. Kevin mentioned 13. 13 on the construction. Take a hold of the table, hope you can do Yes. <laughs> um, 
just a little bit about the technology that we use in our water and wastewater system. This is a screenshot of our SCADA system, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. I like to brag about this because our guys can actually operate our water and our wastewater system from their smartphones. So they may be in a restaurant, they may be in a movie theater, they get an alarm, they can turn pumps on, they can turn pumps off. The actual operating of our system is, is overall very automated. Um, part of the wastewater plant upgrade, we're going to be getting a, a much more modern SCADA system that will actually keep records of things that happen. The system we have right now is more like what I call a remote control, and it's a great system in that they're able to, to turn alarms on and off and that sort of thing, but it doesn't keep records of when things happen. So our new SCADA system is going to be able to do that, and that will help us a lot in long-range planning. But um, it's just really neat that, you know, right from their, their smartphone, so really um, most of our, our physical manual time is spent out in the collection system and out in the distribution system. Being at the, the wastewater plant and the water plant is really minimal time for us. Um, we also use an automated meter reading system. Right now about 90% of our district meters have data logging capability. What that allows is if you suspect you could have a leak or if you just want to know how much water you're using, you can, we can data log your meter by a time interval that you give us. If you want to see what my water usage looked like every 15 minutes for the last 30 days, we can, we can data log it. We go out and we hook it up to a laptop and it will show us exactly how much water you've used at whatever interval you want it set at can per go, minute. Can I go out there with my computer and look at No, you got to have the, the Beacon software for it to upload to. Beacon. Yeah, and we're going to be upgrading that next year. The, the Beacon has upgraded their system. Their, uh, is, is, the, is that data maintained? at the meter itself or is that something that it just transmits and you have to receive and then capture it on the receiver? No, it, we actually pull it out of the meter. There's so the a meter it, it has it a memory in the meter, yes. So every, every, so every, read, sorry, every meter read that you do, it pulls that data and you store it? It doesn't pull the whole data logging. It tells us because what we're doing in meter reading is saying at this moment, what is the meter read? Sure. And so that's all we're storing. But if but we have times where um, we had a complaint recently by a customer to TCQ that state that that told TCQ that they were out of water for an entire day while we did a repair. Well, the customer lived on a street that I knew had not been turned off during that day. So I was able to go to I, I didn't want to you know pick on somebody. So I went, I asked my guys to go to three houses on that street and data log their water meters for from when we knew that meet, when that leak started till the day after it was repaired and we were able to submit that to TCQ and said, see, everyone on this street had water during that entire period. What's, what's just out of curiosity, what's the capture and rewrite period on one of these meters? In other words, can you go back? Three days, five days a month? How, uh, what's it, you what's it you can go case? back. I, I'll have to ask Mike as far back as it goes, but I can tell you that I have had him go back a year. So I know it does at least a year. Wow. And it may do longer than that. I don't know. Wow. But now I do want to say that we've been changing these out over time. And so some meters are going to go back a year just because they haven't sure. been in there a year. Sure. But I know that they will do at least a year, maybe longer. And meters don't have that. About 90% of them do now. And our goal is to get these uh, finished up by the, um, by the end of this calendar year. We want to have everybody on a data logging, at least every residential. It's a little more expensive and tricky with the larger commercial meters, but we're, we're working on that. Um, I don't want to rush through. I have to be out there at, a, at about a little after a quarter till for our wrap up of our drawings. 
So I'll just kind of get on through this. Um, I want to go over a little bit of our district at the efforts that the district does to conserve water. And to me, as the manager, one of the things that I'm most proud of, and you know, you all have your trade, and when you go there, you want to brag about your your specific organization. Well, I can tell you that this gives Trophy Club huge bragging rights. And we as a community should be very, very proud of the uh, selling of reclaimed wastewater to the golf course. Because in Trophy Club, you've been doing it over 30 years. If you go open the newspaper now, you'll see where cities are now starting to, to get that water back to the head of their water plant. Water's at a premium. And to think that Trophy Club was doing this before anybody else thought that was cool. That is huge. And I can tell you that when I go brag about this to my water manager friends, they can't believe it. They cannot believe that Trophy Club has been doing that this long. And, and hey, I've worked here in Fort Worth my entire life and I didn't know they were doing that out there. It's huge. And we should be very, very proud of this. Um, we also, we repair leaks, um, or we, we investigate all leaks pretty much immediately, but always within a 24 hour period. That helps us to get those leaks repaired as soon as possible. We ask that our customers, anytime you even just suspect there's a leak, please call us 24 seven at our main number. Um, I had a gentleman call me this week and he was very nervous about reporting what he thought might be a leak and you know he almost apologetic that he was calling to report it. It turned out it was not a water line leaking, it was just seepage from the storm sewer system. But just like I told him, you know what, you saw water dip running down the street and you did exactly what we hope you would do is just call us. It doesn't take, that's our job, let's go see if it's leaking. Um, we're also working, we work with the town as they do uh, street upgrades. We are trying to change out old as, as best as concrete pipe that's in the system. That is actually really very good pipe. People kind of think, oh, asbestos, you know, but, but it is a very good pipe, but it, it has a, a shorter lifespan than PVC and a lot of it's 40 years old now. So we're trying to kind of get that changed out as we go along as well. Our dead end flushing. Our firefighters do most of our dead end flushing for us at the hydrants. We now have them where they're metering that water so that we can account for it. And we've bought them pouring kits so that they can know, in the past it was just kind of like open it up and let it run till it looks really good and clear. Well, maybe we could minimize that. We need to make sure that, it's a, it, that, it, that the water is at a certain residual. So we've bought them chlorine kits and now they, they flush and every couple of minutes they grab a chlorine and make sure, and it, it's cutting down the amount of time that we're having to do that line flushing. Um, this morning one of the firefighters took me aside and said, can you write us a little something about why we're doing this? Boy, we had a guy out just yesterday with a video camera and people think they're you're wasting the water. Well, unfortunately, if water just sits at the end of a dead end, it becomes stale. And if you're the guy that lives at a dead end, and I do want to tell you, I personally am two houses from the dead end of the line. And I'm not very happy with my town because they don't flush very much. And I could, and I, I told the guy, I said, you have the worst person at the end of your line because I can tell you if you're flushing it or not. And so, but we do a good job. Every, it is a requirement that every 30 days you have to flush every dead end. But what we're trying to do is at least minimize what we're having to do by taking those chlorine samples. Um, we've also in, implemented the year-round twice, year twice per week watering restrictions and um, I think everyone's used to that now. It was kind of not so good at the beginning but it's like everyone expects it and, and they're used to it now. Would there, excuse me, would there be any value to capture that 
flush water? Any? Well, we have that question a lot. Okay. Uh, it would have to be, you know, you'd have to have a truck kind of following you around. Because we have the fire guys do it, they might get right in the middle and then not be able to do it. Yeah. But they do carry hoses with them, and if the homeowner's home and they say, hey, you want us to blow this on your yard, they're happy to do that. So you're kind of lucky if you live at a dead end, you know. Hmm. Um, we have a system that I implemented when I came here. I learned that when we do our meter reads, there was a little program on there that um, allowed, what it did, I was curious, I was like, well, what is this report? So we got with the meter, re the meter company, and they explained that the people that show up on this report, that means that in the 24-hour period before we read their meter, it did not come to a complete halt for a 60 full minutes in a 24 hour period. Well, when you think about it, at 3 a.m., most people aren't using their water at least for an hour, some time. So we implemented this postcard and we've got many, many compliments, many people thanking us greatly that, hey, they didn't know that upstairs bathroom was leaking. They never even go up there. But it, it was an indication to them. So this is, this is a program that we've got actually on my picture here it's white but it's actually known as the blue postcard people will call I got one of those blue postcards mm -hmm. we give away free leak detection tablets our guys are it with when they have time they'll be happy to come out and help people with if they can't figure out the irrigation system the settings our guys will come out and help you with that the data logging service I was talking about I know $25 may sound like something, but I can tell you that at least four people have told me, I was glad I did that. I was glad we did that before I had a plumber come out who was going to charge me $150 because come to find out, they didn't have a leak. So sometimes, it, you know, you might look at that. Um, we also have a customer outreach on our website, tcmud.org. We have rain gauges, a rain gauge program. It show, they, they send us the, the rainfall for the last 24 hours. I mean, they send us the amount of every rainfall event and we keep that tracked on the website. We have our weekly e-blast and you can sign up on our webpage. It tells you all the things that are going on. Our now annual water fest, we do quarterly newsletters and bill inserts and we have speakers available for schools and other organizations. We ask that everyone do your part. Please follow our watering schedule. Report those that are not following our watering schedule. And we do have an anonymous uh, report form on our, our website that we don't have to know who you are if you want to report that someone's watering when they shouldn't be. Very important, report a suspected leak. Just pick up the phone 24, seven days a week. Our phone is answered by our answering service, if not us. Check for leaks at your home and we have toilet, uh, free toilet leak tablets. There's some out here on the water table today. Um, go to our, vis our website and you'll get a lot of good information there. Final thing for today, please help us. I know there's just three of you, but y'all can do a lot of help for us. Monday, we have a huge valve that we have to change out. What this means is we will not be able to pump water from the plant to the elevated. So first thing in the morning, on Monday morning, we will make sure those elevated are full and they will, they will start, this, uh, start this repair. Actually, it's all dug up. If everything goes as planned, it shouldn't take more than two hours. But things don't always go as planned. And so we're babying this by, actually we had our water plant tours and Mike was very nervous because it's torn up out there. But we've got it all ready to go. But what it boils down to is Trophy Club has the water in the elevated and that's it. Gallons. 900,000 gallons and you see that we use about two and a half million a day so it's it help us spread the word we've sent postcards out we've done our e-blast we're hoping the streets are going to put those blinking signs out for us um, we've asked if we have it on the marquees but word of mouth is huge so just help us tell people what what's going on Monday do we have a feeling when that's going to occur I mean, Monday at 9 a.m. They're going to 
they're they're going to be standing there waiting to go Monday at 9 a.m. Well, I appreciate y'all, and I hate to speak in hun, but I got to go pull prizes. So if you all haven't entered the raffle, get out there and do so.